Hey everyone, my name is Ruby and we are here. This is going to be week number 8 of the AP Academy and we are up against Kurt the Buzzwall and his East Coast Bisharps. Now, um, this is a really fun matchup, right? So I think this is going to be one of the most offensive builds that I was able to make. But, um, let's see, right away we see the Kinkelder, Darmanitan, Rhydon, Corviknight, Vileplume, and Raichu. So right off the bat, no Primarina and no Bandabuzz. Those are both really huge. No... Snorlax and no Musharna and no Claydol. So a lot of really, really big things happening here. Um, the door feels opened a decent amount for my Grimmsnarl. Uh, just without things like Primarina, say. Um, and Snorlax would have been a huge, huge issue for me. But, but what I want to lead off with here. It also has a reasonably slow team. Yeah. Part of me, mm, part of me just wants to lead off with a Rotom. I think Rotom makes a lot of sense to me. I think Rotom makes a lot of sense to me. I'll just go for that. My Rotom is Specs, which is my first time with a Specs Rotom. I really did want to bring Specs Rotom last week, but uh, Scarf made a lot of sense for a lot of things that I wanted to do. But yeah, overall, this is going to be a really tough matchup. The, the Conkelter is going to make it really, really tough. If I can break through the Conkelter early, then I feel pretty confident in how this match would go, but I don't know if I'm going to get those opportunities to be able to do the, the, um, that early enough, where I would feel good about the rest of the matchup. But there's a lot going on here, I think, that I have to just think about and worry about. Let's see. does lead off with the Conkelter. Now, here's the thing, right? If this thing is just max HP, then Specs Overheat straight up KOs. Um, I believe. I'm, I'm gonna check on this now, but I believe Specs Overheat should just straight up KO. If it's just max HP, obviously, if it's Assault Vest, then I'm in a huge amount of trouble here, but I feel like I should just go for it. I mean, hopefully I don't miss the Overheat, but... Um, this feels like a worthy turn one after all that talking that I just did about how important this could be in the early game It feels like this is not something that I this is not an opportunity that I feel I'm in a position to pass up So I'm gonna just go for it. I do land the overheat so we will see just how bulky this thing is It's that's huge. That is so so huge obviously that's gonna reveal specs if if um if he is max HP, then it reveals specs. If he's not max HP, no, it still reveals specs. And no matter what, it reveals specs. But you know what? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. It does go out into the Rhydon, so I imagine rocks would come up here. And what does that mean that I can do? I have a lot of anti rocks answers here. I could try to go into this thing here. I didn't take a screenshot of the team. I really should have. Um, I kind of want to try to catch this thing off guard with a Drampa. Maybe expecting me... Yeah, I think that's my best play. Because I think he would expect me to click Defog right away. But I would want to catch it off guard with Grass Knot if that's at all possible. Uh, and we are Expert Belt Grass Knot. So I think, yeah, if, if he just goes for Stealth Rocks... Um, I think I think my, my Serena is going to find an opportunity at some point in the match to get a, to get a, um, a Rapid Spin off. I do want to just take a look at the team. Yeah, I'll take I'll take a screenshot now. I'm going to waste some time, but I think this is going to be more than worth it. I can put this here and I can put this here. Okay. Okay. I really want to get this grass knot off. I think he's going to I don't know. I don't know. Does withdraw. Hmm. That's that's super unfortunate. You probably knew that something was up, but this thing coming in is also huge because I can try to get a big um, fire blast off. This thing is very potentially specially defensive, which would be not ideal for me. But um, it is Black Sludge. So how much should Drampa be doing? Oh, I don't have fire blast because I have extra sensory. Extra sensory should always be a 2 KO regardless. So I can probably just go for that. Um, I think just the 2 at KO would be valuable here. That is very, very specially defensive. That is very specially defensive. 
but I definitely don't mind that. I definitely don't mind that sludge bomb damage at all. I think he would want to make a switch here. I really want to make a call. I think the Corviknight is reasonably likely, and I really want to click Thunderbolt. Like, I desperately want to click Thunderbolt here. I don't think he's in a position to give up this Vile Plume. I don't think he's in a position to give up this Vile Plume. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to click it. We're going to see, because I think I still have answers no matter what happens here. Does withdraw. Do we see the Corviknight? I don't know what that is. No, that is going to be the Raichu. Okay, that's that's okay. Because I think in order to do some real dam real big damage to me, you would have to hit a focus blast. So I'll just try to hit this thing. Um I don't think the Drampa going down is the biggest deal in the world, obviously. Um it's given up the surprise against the Rhydon. Um it, it never really switches into Darmanitan and Vile Plume, the, the surprise has gone for the Vile Plume too with that extra sensory. Um, especially, and obviously, he could have been playing also playing off of me potentially um, missing. Let's go for the fake. I mean, I think that's fine. Um, he could be playing off of me missing Fire Blast, but obviously, that's not the biggest deal in the world with the extra sensory. Does Volt Switch. I don't think anything that comes in is going to want to take a Hyper Voice here. I don't know if he's really expecting me to do anything different, but I don't think Drampa is in a position where it really needs to switch out. Obviously, the Darmanitan coming in would be problematic only because um, it would really prevent me from being able to go for a... being able to go for a... Um, rapid Spin. But with this thing coming in... With this thing coming in... Um, I'm curious. So I believe I should outspeed a no speed Corviknight. Yeah, I outspeed by one if it's no speed. Um, and that hyper voice pretty much reveals that it's that it's max defensive. Yeah. So if it if that's true, then Thunderbolt has a chance to KO here. And again, I should outspeed if it's just fully max defensive. Then I should outspeed and. Does withdraw. Interesting, interesting. Interesting. Goes back out into the Raichu. So he's really scared of this Drampa. Which, having this Drampa just spread around damage is pretty solid for me overall. I mean, it's obviously not the best, but it's not the worst at all. And I don't really have a reason to switch around as much, I don't think. Um... Again, just having the Kinkelder down reasonably early um, helps me out a lot. And now I can go into my Serena, and he and he will be able to play off of the fact that I that I'm that he can switch into Darmanitan on my Rapid Spin. But that's not the biggest deal in the world to me at all. And I really do want the Serena around because um, Serena is pretty much max special defensive just to handle um, a Raichu to always be able to switch in on a Raichu. But Again, I don't think he has any really solid counterplay to just being able to rapid spin here. Other than Darmanitan, but I don't... I was always going to have to take this damage anyway. Goes into the Corviknight. So that's interesting. Because what this allows... I mean, this allows me to just U-turn out into... Into... Uh, Rotom. And Rotom would allow me to Volt Switch... Well... It becomes a lot more difficult to Volt Switch now that he knows that I'm a Specs. But I think that's fine. I think I think it's fine. <laughs> We're fine. Um, what could I do here? What could I do here? Hmm. He could be roosting up. He definitely could be roosting up. I think if I do this, I would have to pull a double. I think if I do this, I would have to pull a double. But if I go into... I know this is not specially defensive. So, would that be able to help me with a... Oh, Savali's doing no damage. Savali's doing next to no damage. 
I think I just have to do this and pull the double. I would kind of be forced into doubling into goes for the U-turn. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. He could also get rocks up again. But Man, this is a tough position to be in. My Rotom being specs is uh, not ideal here, but it, it was the reason that I was able to take out it was the reason I would I was able to take out Um Kinkelder so early, so we can go for a spec Dark Pulse, deal some damage, and then and then um kind of force him into either attacking me, keeping rocks off the field, or yeah, that does de respectable damage. Goes for a Toxic here. Um, that's totally fine. I think he probably expected S Serena to come in there. I think he probably expected Serena to come in there. But, um, we could play for the flinch here. I, I don't think I mind this as much, especially with the Kinkelder already going down. I don't think I mind this as much, um, as long as, uh, Rocks Day Off, and if I could get a flinch, that would be incredible. Goes for the Stone Edge, and misses. So, uh, the same chance of me getting a flinch as Stone Edge missing, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that really means, but... Point is, I three-hit KO this thing, and Rotom is still around. Um, I think he knows that he needs this thing in order to kind of prevent Rotom from just Volt Switching around, um, shamelessly in, in the face of a Corviknight or something like that. Um, and he probably knows that I know already that it's max defensive and that Corviknight almost definitely just doesn't take any hits from this thing. I would be amazed if it does take hits. But I also don't think he has many solid switches in, right? So Vileplume is really weakened, um... Yeah, I think he has to let this thing go down, and that's huge, huge, huge for opening this thing up to Volt Switch later on in the match. So I'm 100% going to preserve this Rotom for definitely a, a bit longer. And we'll see. We'll see how um, what I can pull off here. But now I do want to see if this is a max defensive Corviknight, which I'm almost positive it, ha it has to be. Um, I'm trying to make this impish as well. Here we go. Let's just assume... Max defensive core of a night. Uh, yeah, Volt Switch is just always a K almost always a KO. And then goes out into this thing. I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, he can definitely U-turn, but I think yeah, the play is always to just go into here. Core of a night against G Max Grim Snarl. Max Flare based off a of Fire Punch is gonna be a two KO, which I guess isn't the worst, but it's just not good. It's not great. Um, does go for the Flare Blitz. And... Yeah, I think I, for now I have to assume that that's Scarfed. Darmanitan. That did what, like... 58 points? Where is Silvali? Yeah, that looks r just about right for Jolly Scarf. So, um, this is a very free parting shot for me. Even if he has a mirror armor, um, Corviknight, I don't think that matters too, too much. And then, yeah, from here I can start to make things happen. I can start to get some type of momentum and, uh, yeah, just start to make things happen. Um, I did, I, I did come very close to packing, um, U-turn on this as well because of things like the Raichu, but... Parting Shot felt like more of a solid just utility play here. I don't have anything that just out and out outspeeds this thing, but my go-to play is the Serena. And Serena would allow me to just U-turn out. Uh, U-turn is still going to do very respectful damage. Um, Alolan Raichu. I don't... Uh, this is a very specially defensive Serena. He doesn't know that yet, but it is, and... Serena is still very, very strong, so U-Turn, yeah, U-Turn should always KO. I'm, I'm going to get faked out, which is fine, but the point is, if he, if he tries to stay in and go for damage, then U-Turn is going to KO, and if he, and if he switches out, then yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to try to get some momentum going, but yeah, Serena is always going to be my play whenever I see the Raichu, and hopefully I can start to get um, some pivoting happening. 
does go into this thing. And that's going to allow in my Rotom. Um, it is going to allow in my Rotom. But does it allow in anything else that I would want to do? Does it allow in anything else that I would want to do? I could... Hmm. No, I think I think going into Rotom is, is pretty solid here. I mean, granted, I do know that this thing is very specially defensive, which is pretty bad for me overall. But... Um, a Specs Overheat. I think just something drops to a Specs Overheat, right? I just think something drops to a Specs Overheat. Can I get away with Dark Pulse? If this thing is specially defensive... Can I get away with a Volt Switch? Even if this thing is specially defensive. Um, doesn't look like I do. But I think I just get a KO with Overheat here. I think I just get a KO with Overheat. Can I pull it off with Dark Pulse? Dark Pulse is on the edge here. But yeah, I think I can, I can just Volt Switch here. He could expect the Serena to come in. Um, that would be fine. No, I mean, I really do need it for the Raichu. But, he, I mean, Sludge Bomb is his play. I think he does have a reasonably free... Oh, no, I could just... I could do this. I could do this. And... Yeah. Yeah, because... um oh, Because a Poison-type move was remarkably free in that situation. And now... And now my me my Mel Metal is in a really solid position to deal damage. I could Thunder Punch. Yeah, it looks like Thunder Punch should also always get the KO here. So I don't think I have to worry about just going for that here and banning myself into Thunder Punch. Um, it looks like I might have been trying to make a ma make an aggressive read here, but I don't think I have to just because this thing is banded. And. Darmanitan is a difficult mon for him to bring in here because of the Silvali. Raichu is a difficult mon for him to want to bring in here. It does bring in the Darmanitan. I think... I really think I just clicked Thunder Punch here. I, I mean, first of all, I'm mildly confident that I take one. But also, if I don't, then... Okay, I definitely don't take one. Um, I don't... Yeah, that's definitely not the biggest deal in the world, I don't think. Um, and just being able to play off of that amount of recoil is pretty huge. It does mean that, I mean, it means, it means that I can parting shot out, but it also means that I can multi-attack. Actually, I think, I think at this point, if multi-attack would take out an Alolan Raichu, then... Then I think I take that opportunity. It would. That l that little bit of chip means that I would take it out. So I think just clicking multi attack is a solid play here, because if the Corviknight comes in, then I think I put it in range of a follow up Thunderbolt. And if that's the case, he could just try to flare blitz again. And if he does flare blitz again, trying to yeah, he tries he tries to call my bluff a little bit, but getting this Darmanitan out of the way. I think means that I potentially can win out this match from here because um, I have the tools to beat the rest of his team. If anything, I can just switch between Serena and Raichu all the live long day and I think I get there in the end just by doing that. He could make some super aggressive plays like go into Raichu and and he could Volt Switch. Yeah, I think I have to let Silvali go down. Well, yeah, no, I think so. letting Silvali go down is the best play no matter what happens. Because if Raichu comes in and it clicks Volt Switch, and I bring in Serena, um, wanting to take it out, then, then, um, and I bring in Serena wanting to take it out, then... It, then it allows him to go into Corviknight, goes for the Grass Knot. I mean, maybe? Nope, alright, that's fine. I think that's fine. 
But obviously, it would have allowed in the Serena for pretty much free here. And it does allow me to go into my Serena, click U turn. His only two options are letting this Raichu go down or um, bringing in the Core of Night. And if the Core of Night comes in, then, then Rotom comes in. And yeah, I could just pretty much do this all day. I'm pretty positive. And another match where um, it's very, very possible that Grimmsnarl never touches the field. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I really want to know how this goes. Goes for the Psychic or Max Special Defense. Every indication is that this should um, take it. Yeah, it, it, it did more damage than I would have expected for how specially defensive this Serena is. But Serena, um, I, I believe this is a no attack invested Serena, and it still just does so much damage. Serena's base 120 attack. Uh, it's just so strong. And I can't imagine this Core of Night, especially at certain ranges, being able to eat up a Specs Thunderbolt. And Rotom is in here doing the dang thing. I'm so proud of uh, Rotom and what it was able to pull off here. Um, a lot of stuff happened, uh, a little bit of, of the way that I planned it. I really wish that my, that my Grimmsnarl was in a position to do a little bit more, but everybody else just pitched in and it just never had to touch the field. And this is a Spex Thunderbolt going into a Core of a Knight. I believe that should be the match. I, I really would have loved to have to have gone out in some style with some with an overheat, but the chances of it missing would have been not ideal. But either way, I think this is max defensive in particular for I mean it could be max defensive body body press, which would be pretty bad for me. But um, I think this is max defensive to kind of deal with my mom, my mel metal. Um, so I I can't imagine. Oh, it's G Max. I I hundred percent forgot that it's G Max. I one hundred percent forgot. That is hilarious to me. Okay, okay. So this is definitely different. This is definitely different, but I have to imagine I have to imagine Specs KOs through Dynamax. I have to imagine Specs KOs through Oh it does, okay. I legitimately forgot about that. Okay. So it looks it looks like if it's a if it's max defensive, then Thunderbolt does sixty one percent minimum. Uh, being specs, uh, overheat would have definitely secured it. Overheat looks like it would it would oko through Dynamax, and um, overheat would have definitely shored up those those calcs. But uh, yeah, I guess that's just how it goes. Um, obviously, GG to Kurt. He's he's playing this very early. He he it may have ran out of falling asleep and missed our earlier time, but now um, I believe it might be 5 a.m. for him. So his day is just kind of starting. So. Obviously, uh, he had a lot that he was going through here. Regardless, it was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the NCP Nimbus Division as well as more weeks of the TBL. But this was a really fun week, the APA. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you once again out.